Hi, welcome to What the Flick. I am Christy. My good friend Tim Grierson is here, which is wonderful. Everyone is gone. Matt is in New York. Alonzo is in Dallas. Ben is in Atlanta. We are here for you. And we're going to play Catch Up with Green Room, which came out last week. I want to say a limited release. Maybe it's going wider. So, uh, I think it's, yeah, it was a limited release last week. It's going to be expanding, I think, over the next couple of okay. weeks. Please describe yeah. it. Um, yeah, it's a new movie from writer director Jeremy Saulnier, who did Blue Ruin uh, from a couple of years ago. This movie is. Uh, about a punk band in the Pacific Northwest that take a gig because they need the money in Oregon. The problem is it's a neo-Nazi bar where they have to perform. Uh, the show goes fine, but after the show is over, they stumble upon a murder that they were not supposed to see. The people who work at the bar will not let them leave. Uh, they call uh, the boss, uh, played by Patrick Stewart in sort of a change of pace sort of role. Um, and so the band has to figure out how to get out alive while the people who work at the bar uh, want to eliminate them so there are no witnesses. Let's take a look. Sorry, guys. We've got to clear out. Follow me. And then it's over. Holy shit. I told you to follow me. Stop! No! 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 no. So, you know, I really love Blue Ruin. Um, you know, it was from a few years ago, and it was sort of an indie art house, but still kind of a B movie, kind of like this like kind of gory thriller, but kind of like a revenge story at the same time. It's a slow burn, like this is. Yeah, yes. it, but this is a very kind of different sort of movie, and I've seen this movie twice now. Okay. Actually, the first time I saw it was at Cannes last year when okay. it premiered, and because I loved Blue Ruin so much, I think though I knew this was going to be kind of different. Um, I was a little underwhelmed by Green Room because th this movie doesn't have sort of the emotional depth that Blue Ruin did. It does, it's not a story about a character in some ways discovering something about himself. This is just about a guy who's in a band who are just trying to get out of line. This is a straight up genre picture. Yeah, it's straight <laughs> up like midnight movie type mm -hmm. of thing. And I, when I first saw it, I thought, it's good, but it just it didn't have the same kind of resonance. And then the second time I saw it, which was much more recently, I really, really responded to it. Because I think I understood this is the movie that he wants to do. And as somebody who's seen a lot of midnight movies at different film festivals, this is such like a head and shoulders superior type of thing because it's really smartly done. The characters are actually pretty well drawn. And it actually does, I think, this really great job of sort of drawing out the tension because even though it is really gory and graphic and violent, not throughout the movie. It really kind of takes its time. And so when it really, this is not a spoiler to say, the third act is much more kind of violent as mm. there's kind of this big catharsis. Um, it really, really works because it's kind of been drawn out in this kind of nice way. Yeah, you spend a lot of time with these characters in very close settings. You know, it's this struggling punk band. They live out of their van. They, they siphon gas. You know, the green room itself is kind of claustrophobic. You know, the, the club where they play is very small and very cramped. So you spend some time with these people for a long time. Like the first half hour is just setting up who they are, mm -hmm. How they get gigs, what their dynamic is like within the band. Elias Shawkat is one of the people in the band. Anton Yelchin's another, and you feel the rhythm of these young people trying to make music and just trying to survive. And really, nothing gnarly goes down till like, like the second half. I say it's yeah. only eight seven minutes long, and it just keeps you on your toes the whole time. And a lot of that has to do with the script and with the language in the script because there's almost like its own really specific language in terms of the way Patrick yeah. Stewart describes things and the way they all talk to each other. And so phrases that don't make sense the first time, like true believer or like red laces, things that you don't know what they mean, you're like, hmm, what's that? And so yeah. there's mystery upon mystery as far as what this place is, what it means, who Patrick Stewart is. I love him in this. He's totally chilling yeah, and kind of darkly funny. And part of the humor of that just comes from what a change of pace this is for him. But yeah, it's really cool. Oh, Imogen Poots is good in this too with a really terrible haircut as this punker girl. Yes, yeah, and I, I, I love <laughs> what you said, by the way, because it, it took me a second screening to really get what you were talking about. The thing about the way that what characters are talking about is interwoven in terms of we'll find out like what the, mm -hmm. the red laces mean. Mm -hmm. um, and things like that are really, really smartly done, even in the shorthand that Patrick Stewart has with all of his cronies. Mm -hmm. The way that they talk to each other, there's a sense that, I mean, for me just in general, I really like when movies have a sense that these people all know each other. They didn't just sort of come on the screen, they didn't know each other. Because they talk in a way where there's like a shorthand between all the different mm -hmm. characters. And even within the band, there's that same kind of thing as well. Um, yeah, I think the performances are really, really nicely done. And 
for a pretty low budget movie, um, it's really, really taut. Uh, the action sequences are really nicely done. Um, there's a couple surprises along the way. One thing I don't want to give away to anybody, that there's a scene very near the end of the movie uh, involving a dog, which is such a nice oh, moment. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and for me, it's a type of moment um, where you really see, like, I think, a really good filmmaker because it's such a small mm -hmm. little character detail. Um, after establishing different characters, and this thing that happens with a dog that kind of reveals something really, really nicely. And there's a lot of little small little grace notes, I feel like, throughout the movie mm -hmm. um, this way. I still prefer Blue Ruin. Yeah. I think it's it's a more... It's a more kind of stirring, kind of more. It's deeper emotion. It feels like a, like a like a like a fuller meal uh -huh. in, in a certain way, but this is also a really really strong film yeah. as well. Yeah, he has a lot with a little very very well in a way that reminds me of Kelly Reichert kind of, and part of that is the, the Pacific Northwest wood setting, <laughs> right. and the, the use of silence, and the, the way it's paced, it's very steadily paced. It's a slow burn to use a phrase that Matt actually likes. So, um, what is your number then? I give it a seven point nine. Okay, I'm saying eight point one, which makes math easier. Our average is an eight. It is an eighty eight percent on the tomato meter. Please go see this. It's a really great, really tense, really well acted little indie. Bye.